this is an opportune moment to go back to our original picture or uh, delineation of supposed closed versus open exercises. And um, I don't think we went through it step by step, so let's do that. Now with our understanding of engineering, our understanding of um, some of the issues and even recognizing open and closed. Let's start with the, um, the push-up. Um, very clearly, closed in this plane, unconstrained. If we could see from the head view, straight on like we did with, um, with our uh, slides or uh, videos, um, it's, it's closed in that direction also. So I could really say on the left side, there's unconstrained closed chain. On the right side, there's an unconstrained closed chain. And between the hands, four, and shoulders, there's an unconstrained closed chain. So there's several. We're going to leave that over here. Let's jump over for fun to the bench press. Now they call it open. And I'm sure, if I, if I were to ask you, if I gave you an exam and said, why do you think the, this, this author, these folks, whoever they are, called this open? When there's very clearly a loop, there's very clearly closure. And um, of course, for us, we would, we would want to know, is the guy doing it this way or doing it with, in this plane of closure? And it looks like where his elbows are pointed, it looks like he's going to go somewhat outward. <clears throat> Um, and of course, oh, I didn't mention, there's kind of some in-between stuff, right? There's really, there's really strict uh, sagittal type thing and strict horizontal plane type thing. Um, but this appears to lean more towards the horizontal plane, so it is an unconstrained closed chain. So why did they potentially put it over in this category? They would argue with me right now and say, but it's not weight-bearing. Okay, but that's a sound bite. It's an unsubstantiated sound, but it's actually an inaccuracy as we went through in great detail. So um, that's not going to stay over there. What about leg press? Clearly constrained closed chain in three different places. Left side through the machine, right side through the machine, and between, from the back view, between the feet, foot plate, foot, foot plate, other foot, right, both feet in the foot plate, and the legs and the pelvis. And uh, let's go on over here, keep going. This lady appears to be doing a wide grip pull down, <clears throat> and by performing it in that opposing arc motion, that, that plane of the bar, if you will, it is clearly an, an un, um, unconstrained closed chain. If she had been performing it more like this, where they were parallel arcs, but restrained side to side, that would be a closed chain a constrained or unconstrained closed chain, but not in the plane of the movement. It would be in this direction, right? Obviously, <clears throat> uh, open. This is curious. I really, really, really would love to talk to them and go, okay, what's your support? What's your rationale? What's your mindless thought process <laughs> um, for putting this thing over here on the... It's, it's obviously a single joint activity. And they're literally, this is built for knee flexion and extension, right? Resisted knee flexion. And they've got a band on there, which, which is completely worthless if they're trying to offload it at the hardest part, right? We know about all that stuff. <clears throat> um, it's helping him, by the, time, by the time he gets up to the top, the band would have less tension in it. And um, when it goes down here and offers more tension, it's got no moment arm. It's, it's a ridiculous exercise, but... <laughs> More to the point, um, is it because he's um, weight bearing down here? It's got to be it. I've never seen anybody suggest that a weight bearing single joint exercise was closed chain. That is the most is it interesting thing that they put that on here. It clearly, clearly goes over there. The squat, well, we've talked about that. That's going to end up on the open chain side, not, not because there's zero closed chains in it. We know there's a constrained closed chain within the frontal plane, but it is not what? It's not part of the current motion that this person's performing. So it's going to go over here. This one's kind of curious to me. I can't tell enough about this exercise from a static picture to really tell what she's doing. It looks like her elbows are kind of pointed out. They're not here and they're not forward. 
So this is questionable to me. What she does on the way up could determine where this ends up more, whether it ends up more like a um, more like an open chain or more like an unconstrained closed chain. And then there's that factor we talked about that we haven't discussed really yet about what happens if there's a lot of weight to compared to the strength, that, that proportion of strength to load, even if it is an open chain. So, you know, I would really almost, given, given that I don't know enough from this picture, and I'm unwilling to make uh, an assessment for you and I that's inaccurate, I'm going to say I don't know because I need more information. So if we were to rejumble those, it would end up looking something like this. Um, and I put her kind of crossing the fence here because it could go either way based upon what? Think clear back. Think clear back to our um, exercise equation. A thousand and ones. How is the exercise designed? How is it executed? So the fact that she has her hands on a bar does not automatically make it closed in the plane of movement. How is she going to do it? I can't tell from this. So that's our little key right there. Anyway, um, as best I can tell right now, that's how we'd have to do this thing.